with this company? About three years since I graduated from my internship and became a dietitian. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What do you do on, in your free time? I do a lot of running. Uh -huh. um, I like to stay active. I do a lot of cooking, actually. Uh -huh. um, grocery shopping, hanging out with my friends. So that's that kind of plays into what you do. You don't just, you're not just a registered dietitian. You walk the talk. I do. It's it's like there's very little um, boundaries between my personal right. life and my professional life. Right. Staying <laughs> in shape. Very much overlap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually recently got certified as a personal trainer, so I'm like awesome. seriously just you're fitness, health, nutrition. It's my passion. You're in deep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're glad that you're on our show today, Servings Kitchen with a Cause. We feature people who are helping the community. And uh, introduce yourself. My name is Alyssa. I'm a registered dietitian with Good Measure Meals. Um, and Good Measure Meals is a part of an Atlanta-based nonprofit called Open Hand. And we're going to learn more about those two entities and how they kind of relate and work together. Uh, but, you know, normally on the show, I do the cooking, okay? But when we have a registered dietitian on, <laughs> I get to take a break. She's she's in charge. We're gonna tag team. Well, yeah, she'll put well, me to work the yeah. way I usually we'll put together. the guests to work. Um, <laughs> and usually, I know what we're cooking, but the guest does not. Really? And we use the beach towel of deception to cloak the ingredients of the recipes, and then I'll reveal it, and you know they find out what we're cooking. Today, I'm the one who's in the dark, so you get to take off. The, the beach, beach towel, towel deception, deception. and okay. I get to try to figure out what we're cooking. Okay, am I doing it now? Yeah, go okay, ahead. Okay, here we go. Oh, dun, dun, uh, Ooh. Now, one thing I was sure that I would see uh -huh. is healthy stuff. So some most of this stuff, yeah. I would say, gets the dietitian stamp of approval. Let's see: balsamic vinegar, yep. maple syrup, natural, natural peanut yes, butter. Key. Yeah, all sorts of. Uh, oh, looks like we may be doing a dessert here. Uh huh. Definitely. Lots three courses stuff. today. Yeah, three courses. Okay. Uh huh. Oatmeal. Hmm. Well, we got the arugula. arugula my so, very favorite green. Oh, so, so good. I I'm thinking a salad. That's gonna be the first course. Yep. Okay. We're gonna do an arugula salad. And then I see chicken over here, so I bet we're having chicken. Mm -hmm. Main dish is going to be a one pan chicken, roasted sweet potato, and roasted Brussels sprouts dish. Oh, man, I love both of those vegetables. Good. So I like to hear good. that. We're good. And then the dessert is, what are we doing there? Something with the oats. So it's going to be an oat, a chocolate oatmeal peanut butter energy bites. So it's a dessert you can feel good about because it's really tasty, but there's some really nutritious ingredients in there. How do you feel about taking over the show and just feeding me every month? <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, yeah. It was kind of a long drive out here, right. so. We'll come to you. Maybe once a week. We'll come to you. Once a week, yeah, that's even better. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna reset. We're gonna get ready for the first recipe and we're gonna learn all about Open Hands Atlanta and Good Measure Meals. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right, so we're set up to do the salad first. Yep, our first course. Okay. So it's going to be um, an arugula salad with a lemon vinaigrette, mm -hmm. and then we're going to top it with some um, freshly ground Parmesan cheese, or freshly nice. grated Parmesan cheese, and some dried cranberries. Oh, I love sun-dried cranberries. They're and amazing. And everything we do with this recipe is actually very customizable. So if okay. you didn't have cranberries, you could actually use fresh fruit. It would be really good with like sliced pears or mm -hmm. little clementine segments. Oh, nice. Yeah, fresh apples. Um, and actually with the dressing too. Mm -hmm. The basic components of like making your own salad dressing are very interchangeable. So mm -hmm. it's a great way to, instead of a store-bought dressing, um, where you get a lot of added sodium and sugar, a lot of times with preservatives, you mm -hmm. can make your own. Super easy, super flavorful, mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna start with that. Okay. Okay. So the base is gonna be olive oil, All right. which is great because it's full of hard, healthy, unsaturated fats. Mm -hmm. And if you hear jingling in the background, it's not Santa Claus. It's my sidekicks, the dogs. <laughs> Which are, they're very welcome. We love dogs. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do half a cup of our olive oil plus another tablespoon. Okay. And that's a great base for any kind of time you're, you know, making your own salad dressing. All right, then we're going to do um, some acid. We're going to use lemon. We're going to okay. use half a lemon. But if you were, if you wanted to change up the flavor profile, you could do vinegar. You could do okay. red wine vinegar, balsamic so you just want vinegar. The fat and then an acid. Yeah, okay. exactly, exactly. So these are all looking at the ingredients. These are things that 
a lot of people commonly have in their house. Yeah, commonly have or can easily grab at the uh, supermarket mm -hmm. and pretty inexpensive. Right. So this is, I mean, this is not rocket science. Everyone, yeah. everyone at home can do this. <laughs> so feel empowered. And then if you don't have this kind of thing, this yeah. lemon squeezer, this is life changing. Yes. You get all the juice out of the lemon and you don't get your hands all like mm -hmm. sticky. Seriously life changing. All right, so we've got our lemon in there. And it's stress relief. Yes, it's kind of like a stress <sighs> ball. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you're driving a lot. So this is about two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were doing vinegar and measuring it out, you'd want to do about two tablespoons. Okay. Then we're gonna add some garlic. You can freshly chop if you feel like it. It'd mm -hmm. be one clove garlic um, chopped. We're gonna use the minced here. We're cheating. A little bit, but you know, sometimes it's all about convenience. It like is. if you're, if this is gonna help you actually do it, yeah. you know, take that easy step. You get home from work, you don't feel like chopping up a bunch of vegetables yeah. and you know, garlic especially. Exactly. Get your hands all stinky. I actually always have one of these yeah. in my fridge at all times, and I use it pretty much every day. Me too. Just a half a teaspoon there. And doing like garlic, onions, fresh herbs and spices really does add a lot of flavor, mm -hmm. um, which allows you to use less salt. Right. So that's really makes it heart healthy also. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our garlic, we've got our three base ingredients. Now you can add mustard to this for kind of a kick if you're making mm -hmm. your own dressing at home. The one we're making today actually doesn't call for it, uh -huh. um, but I wanted to have it out here just as sort of a talking point. Okay. Then we're doing some salt and pepper. So I mean, it's really to taste, but we'll just do a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. That's it. That's awesome. That's easy. Easy peasy. Okay. Should we mix it up? Do we need a spoon or a fork maybe sure. to whisk it up? Do you want to do that? Sure. We'll give you a job. I'm going to cheat. Just going to pour it right into the, the bottle. This is a super cool bottle. It has different like ideas for salad dressing recipes right on the side there. And little lines to show you the proportions. And the top. Is back here. And it mixes up the salad dressing. Make sure. Another genius invention like this lemon squeezer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with oil and vinegar or oil and lemon juice, you kind of, once it sits, you're going to need to mix yep. it back up. You absolutely, you will because the oil is going to separate from, there it is. from the liquid. Okay, so we've got our dressing. We're going to pour it over this arugula. Arugula is one of my very favorite greens. Um, it has kind of a nice spicy kick, but honestly, you could do this over romaine, you could do this over bib lettuce, spinach, or even mix it up. But arugula is definitely my favorite. So we've got that in there. And then we're gonna grate on some of this Parmesan cheese. Oh, we're is. not taking the easy route and getting the pre-grated because right. there is something about fresh Parmesan that is just... And I did learn the other day that a lot of pre-grated cheeses mm -hmm. have something added to Cake them so, they, -caking agent. so mm -hmm. they don't stick together, so yep. you're avoiding all of that. Exactly, you're just getting the good stuff. Yeah. And it's gonna taste a little bit fresher like right after it's mm -hmm. ground. This is honestly, there's no right amount, it's kind of however much you want. If you plated it, if you plated each salad individually, you could kind of shave a little bit over each one for Whoever wants I know more, exactly, whoever wants less. I know exactly how much cheese to use. Oh yeah? Because when there's no more cheese to grate, then I used enough. <laughs> That's a good method. Yeah, when I'm gr grinding my hand, I've gone too far. <laughs> you wanna give me a hand with this? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> These are our dried cranberries. And, you know, worst case scenario, we just cut that thing right That's true, you can always do that. And this actually has a nice, kind of look pretty too. You've got the different colors. Oh, yeah. You always want to think about having a couple different colors or several different colors right. in your meals. Um, with fruits and vegetables actually, the different colors are different nutrients. Mm -hmm. So we talk about eating the rainbow. You want to get right. a variety of colorful fruits and vegetables. That's why I eat a lot of Skittles. <laughs> that doesn't so count. So healthy. That does not count. All your vitamins and minerals How right does... there in one bag. <laughs> How does this work? Just turn it. But like to pour it on. Oh yeah, the spout right there. So you just, just kind of hold the top. Okay. And then just pour that right All in. All right. Yes. Okay. So that's super easy, right? Yeah. You're gonna toss it around, yeah. And you could totally plate this, you know, and then do, everybody Each could add one. their own yeah. Parmesan, depending on how much people wanted, their own salad dressing, some people want to use less. Make a salad buffet. Mm-hmm. All the different toppings. Yeah, but starting your meal with a salad is always a good idea. Yeah. 
full yeah, of antioxidants. I mean, you know, you, you start with the best stuff first. You get a little full, mm -hmm. and then you work your way down from there. <laughs> so Ooh. you're not eating as much as the bad stuff. Yeah, I mean, you fill up with with um, with non-starchy vegetables and salad. Absolutely, that's a great strategy. There you go. Thank you. And a fork. Am I taste testing or are you? We're both. We both still. are. Okay, oh, good. Man, you're not leaving me out. This is. I mean, I eat this kind of thing like every day. All right. All right. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's good, right? Who else Boom. wants to try? We actually do have an audience here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're gonna let them taste in just a <laughs> second. Right now, this is ours. We're gonna clean up a little bit. Make your own salad dressing. So easy, so easy. Now, before we go, yeah, I do want to ask you a couple questions. Yeah, we got to talk about open hand, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I, we at the beginning of the show, we talked about open hand. And we talked about uh, good measure meals. Good measure meals. Mm -hmm. So, how do they kind of work together? It's very. It's actually kind of a unique um, setup, and it's awesome. So, with Open Hand, uh, Atlanta-based nonprofit, mm -hmm. started in the 1980s, really to serve um, the AIDS and HIV community, mm -hmm. providing um, home-delivered nutritious meals. Okay. And then expanded from there to really serve a whole broad array of people, you know, different illnesses people are suffering, suffering from, from right. heart disease, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, mm -hmm. and now over 5,000 meals per day are um, cooked packaged and delivered wow. to people all across Atlanta and the surrounding counties who are food insecure, usually 200% mm -hmm. below the poverty line right. and dealing with some kind of chronic or acute illness. Um, and then Good Measure Meals is the social enterprise of Open Hand. Okay. So basically the revenue generating arm. Oh, okay. And so we offer- It's like a p permanent fundraiser. Ex exactly. Boom. So it, make, it makes Open Hand less kind of dependent on mm -hmm. grants and private donations, which still contribute some of the funding, mm -hmm. but Good Measure Meals is a consistent, sustainable revenue stream. Okay. Also because we're serving a different population and allows us to really expand um, our mission of providing nutrition education and promoting wellness across mm -hmm. the socioeconomic spectrum. So people that can afford to pay for healthy meals, healthy catering, nutrition, mm -hmm. um, one-on-one nutrition counseling, which is what I do, mm -hmm. and um, corporate wellness, mm -hmm. and then fund healthy meals for people that can't afford them but okay. need them. Oh, that is awesome. That's Pretty a great cool. idea. You know, because a lot of organizations, they'll just, you know, do two fundraisers a year, yep. they try to get grants. It's a yeah, struggle it is. the entire time, but you guys have a successful business that funds mm -hmm. the, the charity part, the nonprofit. So. Yeah, we're one of the oldest, if not the oldest, social enterprise in Georgia, Good wow. Measure Meal. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really neat partnership. I feel so, so lucky to that's work great. for an organization like Open so, Hand. And Good Measure Meals, that's available in Douglas County? Yeah, so can do all that. On, the, on the Good Measure side, mm -hmm. um, people order fully cooked individual meals mm -hmm. um, that are nutritionally balanced and fresh, made in our kitchen in Midtown and then delivered twice a week to about 100 pickup locations all mm -hmm. across Atlanta and the county. So we've got a few pickup locations out here in Douglasville mm -hmm. or Douglas County, working right. on a couple more. Okay. Um, you've had some of the meals, right? I have. What'd you think? Amazing. Yeah. I mean, and so easy. It doesn't it's get any neat. easier. I mean, it's, I mean come yeah. on. It's heat and eat, but they're not frozen. Right. They're made locally, right. they're all fresh, no preservatives. Mm -hmm. um, and actually the next dish we're gonna make is very similar to the kind of meal that you would find on a Good Measure meal. All right, so we're gonna clean up and we're gonna make that dish. What is that dish? Um, so a balsamic roasted chicken with sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts. Awesome, I can't wait. But I'm gonna finish the salad first. It is time to cook the main dish. Yes. All right, and we have two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken. We got a lot of chicken. But that's that's more than we actually need. It's more than you need if you're cooking for for a four-person family, even mm -hmm. a five-person family. This would really serve like a dinner party, honestly. Okay. A good serving of proteins for four ounces or so. So yeah. we've got we got eight servings in here. All right. Now, but however. We do kind of have a dinner party going on here. We, we got, do. We, we got, got people of, running we got a lot the cameras. Of folks here today. Mm -hmm. We got somebody back there sleeping. Somebody so we doing social cook media. Should we cook it all? We'll, we'll, we'll see what fits. How about so that? So the idea, though, is this is a one-pan meal. So the chicken, the potatoes, and the Brussels are all going to be cooked on that one pan. So there's minimal cleanup. Right. So if we can't fit all the chicken on there, that's going to be sort of the deciding factor. These are some thick breasts. Yes. Yep. I'm gonna let you do the honors of slicing them up. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. Some natural. It's so heavy. We've it's got some bones. We gotta get bone. the bones out. 
We don't want those. And you can save these chicken bones and make a nice stock. Yeah, that's a great idea. This marinade that we're gonna make today, it's delicious on chicken. It's gonna be a balsamic based marinade. It'd be great on, on seafood also. I think it'd be okay. really good on some fish um, or even like on some, some steak. Now is, is chicken just a better? Protein? No, it, yeah. I mean, there's, been, there's really a benefit to getting a variety of protein sources. Okay. So skinless chicken though, there is for sure a benefit because the skin is where all the saturated fat is. The chicken is where, um, the, the meat of the chicken is where like the lean protein is. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing a breast versus a dark meat, you're also gonna be getting less saturated fat. Okay. So it's gonna be a leaner choice and be heart healthy. Yeah. Now which way do you think I should cut this? Like this or like mm. this or what do you think? I cook. think make it thinner. Okay. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because we want the vegetables and the chicken to kind of cook in the same amount of time. Otherwise, we're going to have to open the oven and grab the veggies before the chicken's done. Mm -hmm. So kind of having it be thinner is going to be work to our favor. You could probably pound it down, too, if you had, like, one of those mallets. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're doing this dirty work. <laughs> and if you really want convenience, I mean, you can find it almost any um, supermarket the, the little chicken tenders or the chicken cutlets that are mm -hmm. already smaller and portioned out for you um, so you don't have to kind of deal with this. There we you go. You did a good job though. Yeah. I didn't do too bad. No, not too bad. I'm not putting it on my resume, but <laughs> it'll do. That one worked a little easier. These are perfect. Yeah, these are nice, nice thin and nice even slices. There we go. Okay, so we've got our chicken prepared. Now we're gonna make our marinade. And kind of like with the dressing, making your own marinade is one, really easy, and two, a great way to control the ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, versus when you're buying a store-bought marinade, you're gonna often get a lot of preservatives, sodium, sugar. Um, so this is right. this is doable and um, healthier for the most part. Before we start that, yeah. tell the people at home how you got to this position. <laughs> And I'm gonna go wash this amazing chicken juice off my hands. All right. <laughs> so I started, I actually moved down to um, Atlanta after I did graduate school in New York for nutrition. Before you become a registered dietitian, you have to do a year of supervised training and it's a matching program. So I got matched with Emory, which is what brought me down here. And um, right out of my internship, got a part-time position at Good Measure Meals, um, really running our internal employee wellness program. So helping create wellness programs, healthier food choices, more physical activity for um, open hand employees. And loved, loved, loved working um, really in a wellness organization and having that kind of interplay between Good Measure Meals and Open mm -hmm. Hand, how they fit together. and then. Stayed there part-time working as a clinical dietitian to kind of make ends meet. And then as soon as a full-time position opened up at Good Measure Meals, um, I jumped at the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so now I do I do some of the corporate wellness. Um, I do some cooking demos, uh, nutrition presentations, but primarily what I do is one-on-one -on -one counseling. Okay. So people that are trying to eat healthier, maybe lose weight, mm -hmm. ma manage a condition like diabetes or heart disease, mm -hmm. um, or train. I work with a lot of athletes, so runners, people who are training for triath triathlons or right. any kind of sport. Um, their nutrition plays a big role, and so mm -hmm. I kind of work with them individually to figure out how to how to tailor their their eating plan to cool. help them reach their goals. And that's really wow. my passion. Love it. Yeah. So you get to take your passion to work, make money yep. with it. That's awesome. That's why I chose a career in nutrition. I was like, I want a career that feels authentic, that is what I care about, mm -hmm. um, so that work doesn't really feel like work. Mm -hmm. Just an extension of what I care about. That's awesome. All right. So we're gonna make this marinade for the chicken. Yes. We talked about this before we actually started. There. Are Various ways you can do this. You can make the marinade in a bowl, put the chicken in, cover it, put it in the refrigerator. Yep. You can do the exact same thing except for pour everything into a bag. Or we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold the bag, we're gonna put all the marinade in the bag, then put the, and mix it up, uh -huh. and then put the chicken in, seal it, put it in the refrigerator. And I've never done that this, th yeah, this way, so, so this is this gonna be a learning experience for me. New. You kind of, it's a two person thing. Yeah. Normally when I'm cooking, I'm by myself, so I, right. you need to have somebody to hold the bag open. Okay, so the first ingredient is gonna be balsamic vinegar. Okay. Get a little sticker on here. We're gonna do a quarter cup, and this is a balsamic roasted chicken, so this isn't the only kind of, um, you know, marinade you can make. I love balsamic vinegar. It's oh, just so too. flavorful. It's probably my one of my go-tos. Have you ever reduced it oh, yes. and then use it to drizzle over yes. stuff? Wow. So good. A little bit of sugar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So flavorful. Oop. Okay. Balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna add a little bit more just for because we've got some. We've got for a lot. Good you know what? I'm gonna actually double 
for good the, measure. Yeah, for good measure. I'm going to double the recipe because this is twice as much chicken as I was planning on, so True. that makes sense. Twice as much chicken, twice you're, as much marinade. And you're doing the math in your head? <laughs> wow. That's just... <laughs> yes, I'm a genius. Okay. <laughs> Um, Dijon mustard. Mm -hmm. Honey mustard would work too, but we have honey in this recipe. So we're, it's normally one tablespoon, so that's, that's a teaspoon. We're gonna do two tablespoons. See, that's not rocket science math, that's easy math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dijon mustard. All right. And honestly, with any marinade, you usually have like um, ingredient, like measurement recommendations. Mm -hmm. But it's not, I mean, right. you can fiddle with you, it a little bit. It's not perfect. Yeah. It's not like baking where yeah. there isn't really like a science to it. Yeah, that's chemistry. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we get the honey again. We need to open this. A little bit of sweetness in a marinade is like yeah. key. It really is awesome. Okay. Spicy, sweet, yeah. salty. Yeah, got a kick of salt, of spice from the mustard. And what I've learned with marinades is go bold because you're not going to get all of that flavor. It's not like you're going to be, you know, taking It doesn't all even stay on the chicken. Right, yeah. exactly. So you kind of have to go a little over the top. I fully agree with that. Bold flavors. We're doing, so this, the recipe calls for two tablespoons of honey. Mm -hmm. Since we're doubling it, we're going to use four. See, this is the thing I wasn't sure of whether using the bag, we're really going to get to mix the honey, but TJ is assuring me that we will. I can do it. So, yeah. And if I can't, you'll never know, because I'm going to edit this to make it look like I did. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, so we've got to get it all out. All right. Okay. All right. So now we've got vine we've got our balsamic vinegar, we've got our mustard, we've got our honey. We're going to do some garlic. Again, we're going with the pre-minced yep. for convenience. Just so easier. Two cloves, we're really going with four cloves because we're doubling it, so that's right. going to be four times half a teaspoon two of this stuff. Two teaspoons. So two teaspoons. All right. Is that right? Yeah. Good math. See, it's now not, you have the math It genius. should be. Here we go. And like I said, I use this all the time. I always have this in my fridge. Come on. Oh, <laughs> is this what I had the honey in? Yeah. It's all stuck. It's cool. All right. Got our garlic again. A lot of good flavors in here. Mm -hmm. This is going to add some nice flavor profile to our chicken, and most of it is not going to actually stay on the mm -hmm. chicken. So, and like you said before, this this could be used for various meats. Yeah, absolutely, and fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got our dried oregano and our dried basil. You could do fresh. You could mm -hmm. always go with fresh herbs and spices. The benefit of dried is that you know they're con it's convenient. Yeah. You don't have to worry about going out and buying it and it going bad. You can just yeah. keep it you know in your shelf. Have always have like a kind of a variety of different ones, mm -hmm. and this I'm gonna open. Mm, should I just dump it in a little sure. bit? Sure. Yeah. Again, since the measurements are sort of estimates, we're just gonna dump it in. You can change the flavor profile of your marinade by doing different herbs and spices. Mm -hmm. So we're doing. You could do basil. I mean, we're doing basil, but you could do like parsley. You could do chili powder, cumin, thyme, thyme, rosemary. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna do some salt and pepper. Okay. Just a little bit. Oops, that was a lot. It's Man. gonna be a very peppery chicken marinade. And a little bit of salt. All right. That's it. Is that it? That is it. All yeah, right. it's pretty so easy, right? Now it's my, the pressure's on. I'm gonna do this with a whisk. Uh huh. That's, you gotta have a, a heavy duty Ziploc. Yeah, this is a, actually yeah. a freezer. Freezer safe one. Type, mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't want it, you don't want it leaking. Definitely not, especially once you put it in your fridge. A full fridge, you don't want that marinade over everything. I think it worked. It looks great, it looks great. I'm glad we doubled the recipe because that's a lot of chicken. Yeah. Boom. Okay, chicken, I'm gonna hold it now and you can put the okay. chicken in. I'm letting you do all the dirty work. I'm Did cheating. You oh, okay. <laughs> All right, get those bones out of the way. One piece. And I'm gonna try my best not to touch the seal so that we're not accidentally getting chicken stuff everywhere. Yeah, with raw chicken and with raw meat, you've gotta be very careful with cross-contamination. 
So we're gonna we go. get rid of this cutting board yes. and do a, a separate one for the veggies. And am I just closing this? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna shake it up. It looks good already. Yeah. I don't even think we need to cook it. Let's just. <laughs> we need to cook it. <laughs> we definitely need to cook it. Yeah. Probably good. Do idea. not advocate consuming raw meat <laughs> or raw right. chicken. In the fridge. Yeah. So now I'm going to wash some uh, knives and we're going to get chopping. Okay. 30 minutes at least to really let the flavors of the marinade soak in. Yeah, we washed our potatoes. We're keeping the skin on for some extra fiber. So we did have to do a good wash. And while the chicken's marinating, we're gonna prep our veggies. Okay. And so notice we have nice clean um, yes. cutting boards here. We don't wanna cross contaminate with the chicken. Sparkling, sparkling clean. So this is gonna go in 400 degree oven. Yeah. How long? It depends on the oven and the thickness of the vegetables you have on mm -hmm. here. So I did this the other day, it took about 22 minutes, mm -hmm. but I had pretty thin chicken. Okay, so this so is gonna take a lot longer than that. It may take a little longer, maybe 25 yeah. to 30 minutes. Okay. T um, thermometer, 165 mm -hmm. degrees, but okay. we don't wanna overdo it because we don't want the chicken to get dry. Right. Okay. okay. Well, we'll get this in there in just a second. And then we can go ahead and start the uh, dessert. The dessert. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, and this is a good dessert. Awesome. All right. Can't wait. We'll be right back. We're ready to do the dessert, but before we start, I do want you to talk to me about the types of meals that specifically mm -hmm. that you can get through good measure meals and how that process works. Awesome, yeah. Well, one of my favorite things to talk about are the meals that are available because they are so delicious. Mm -hmm. I eat one nearly every day and my coworkers do too. So it's really good food, it's all fresh. Mm -hmm. um, my personal favorite meal is the honey lemon chicken, um, which comes with a wild rice pilaf and roasted butternut squash. Oh, nice. So good. Um, we also have a vegetarian line, and so mm -hmm. one of my favorites on the vegetarian menu is an arugula um, pesto that uh -huh. we do over stuffed rigatoni, as well as a butternut squash ravioli. I like the butternut wow. squash. Yes, I've um, had that before. <laughs> we do a, um, a chicken meatloaf, a turkey meatloaf mm -hmm. that comes with um, mashed sweet potatoes and air coat, roasted air coat barrets, or sometimes with roasted Brussels sprouts. Okay. So you get that good balance of a protein, a healthy carb, and, right. and a veggie. But the flavors are just really good. And then we recently launched a new menu line called Fuel. Um, oh, okay. And it's designed for those with higher protein needs, right. athletes, and it features more organic ingredients. And so some of the cool new uh, meals we have on that line, we have a wild caught salmon that comes with organic quinoa mm -hmm. and um, a kale, uh, like a sauteed kale salad. Uh -huh. We do a blackened haddock um, that comes with roasted sweet potatoes. So there is a four week rotating menu. You mm -hmm. could for eat three meals a day, seven days a week, and mm -hmm. not repeat. Wow. What you're eating, yeah. That's so if you're crazy. looking for the consistency of like a calorie and macronutrient dish, um, based meal uh -huh. without having to meal prep, you can get that and have that variety that you would never get if you meal prep for yourself. Right. And if somebody said, that sounds like I need to have that. In I my need life. a break from the kitchen, sign me up. How does it work? How do they do it? So either over the phone with our customer service team who are fantastic. I mm -hmm. sit right next to them. They're real people and they're right here in Atlanta. Right. Um, they're really, really nice too and they all eat the meals. So they can be really helpful. So mm -hmm. over the phone or online, www.goodmeasuremeals.com okay. and you place your order by 4 p.m. on Thursday the week before you want your meals. Okay. So if you wanted to get started on meals Monday, by Thursday at 4, you've got your order in. You can order one, two, or three meals a day, mm -hmm. five or seven days a week. You can do our healthy selection line, our vegetarian line, mm -hmm. um, our fuel line, a no seafood plan, lots of variety. Um, we even have a diabetic, a diabetic okay. plan. That's helpful. Um, yeah, and then once you place the order, you pick up your meals twice a week because they're fresh right. with very few preservatives. So you pick up on Mondays and Thursdays. And even though our kitchen's in Midtown, we have pickup points at over 100 sites across Atlanta okay. and the surrounding county. So no matter where you live or where you work, mm -hmm. there's gonna be somewhere that's pretty convenient for you. And right. so it'll be a cooler, like a refrigerator, 
labeled Good Measure Meals, your meals will be there with your name on them, all packaged and ready to go on Mondays and Thursdays. That's so we really partner cool. with all the Metro Ys, we partner with fitness centers, mm -hmm. um, some government and community buildings, some, mm -hmm. some companies have our coolers, but there's going to be something convenient for you no matter where you live or work. Mm -hmm. and that's a lot easier than having to go by the grocery store. Well, yeah. Because that's just where it starts. That's you where it starts, to, you have exactly. You buy the food, you have to go home, mm -hmm. you have to cook it. You just go there twice a week. Pick and the meals, meals are fully cooked, so mm -hmm. it's not, we, there are a lot of great meal services out there now that give you the ingredients to cook, right. which is awesome if you want to cook. Right. If you don't want to cook, yeah. or you have a really busy week and you really just want to eat healthy and not have to worry about it, these meals come you know, ready to eat, mm -hmm. pop in the microwave or the, or the oven, and they're, they're, they're individual servings. They come at different calorie levels, so that, no matter what your needs are, what your goals are, you can find right. a plan that's going to fit with you. Very customized. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. So we're going to go ahead and start this amazing uh, dessert recipe. The best part. Which I'm guessing is, is as far as desserts go, relatively a healthier, healthy. Yeah. yeah. So this is a dessert you can feel good about for sure because okay. all the ingredients do, do have some kind of health benefit or at least aren't complete waste of, mm -hmm. of your calories. Not to say that it's not okay to indulge every once in a while. Right. Um, but this is a dessert that tastes good and is actually pretty good for you. It okay. also doubles as a snack. So okay. it's a very like nutrient dense, energy rich snack that you could throw in your purse mm -hmm. um, or your bag or your gym bag, your man bag, your man bag and have kind of in the your middle of the nurse. afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very kid friendly too. Okay. So this is a recipe we actually have kids. We teach kids classes sometimes and have mm -hmm. kids make this for themselves. Right. So for those of you at home with kids, they can get involved actually making this, mm -hmm. which is a great way to have them you know eating healthier, getting kids involved in the cooking process. Mm -hmm. Almost always gets them more interested in yeah. actually trying a new uh, healthy yeah. food. Yep. And um, yeah, this is delicious. Kids love it, adults love it. It's great as a dessert, it's great as a snack. Um, and we're gonna get started. Okay. Okay, so old fashioned oats. You can use quick oats for this actually too because okay. we're not cooking these. We're just combining ingredients and kind of mm -hmm. mushing them together. So oats are awesome for your health because they're full of soluble fiber which helps mm -hmm. lower that bad LDL cholesterol. So we're doing a cup of oats. And of course you can multiply this recipe as yeah. needed. All right, we're then gonna do a half a cup of our natural peanut butter. And the reason it's really important to do natural is because if it's not, it often will have added trans fats or saturated fats to it. Mm -hmm. um, a natural peanut butter is going to have that na that oil separation at the top. It right. doesn't mean it's rancid. It's actually right. a good sign because <laughs> peanut oil is an unsaturated liquid at room temperature fat. Right. Um, and all you have to do is store it upside down oh, so okay. that you don't need to worry about kind of stirring it all together. A little Did trick. Did not know that. Yeah. But yeah, you want to look for a peanut butter with that oil separation. Could you also use uh, peanut butter that you might like Whole Foods or something like where you grind it yourself? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So so for a peanut butter, what you want to look for, or an almond butter, or anything, the only ingredient should be peanuts mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of salt. Okay. You don't want to see hydrogenated oil. You don't want because that means there's trans fat. Mm -hmm. You don't want to see um, palm kernel oil actually because that means there's been saturated fat added okay. to have it stay at room temperature, stay solid at room temperature. Um, and so those are the the unhealthy fats is when it comes to heart health. Here I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect solution. There we go. All right, so we did a cup of oats, a half a cup of our natural peanut butter. Now we're gonna add three tablespoons of pure maple syrup. You can use honey here too, it's just the idea is to have some kind of sweetener. Mm -hmm. So this is the real deal. This is the real deal, and I think, you know, you can use less when you do the real stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're, you're gonna end up taking, there's sugar, I mean this is sugar, it's right. not great for us, but again, you can use less if you do the real stuff because it's, it's just the flavor is just that much stronger. Uh -huh. And I think it's it's worth doing it up the real way. Okay, so that's actually the base. And you can use any kind of sweetener, any kind of nut butter. Mm -hmm. So sometimes schools now are like peanut free, right. or you may have a child with a peanut allergy. So you can use cashew butter, you could use sunflower mm -hmm. seed butter, almond butter, um, anything works. So again, okay. very customizable. And that's the base. And so we need a, we need a spoon to start kind of incorporating. incorporating it all, yeah. It smells good already, right? Yes. So that's our base, and then you get about a cup of mix-ins. Okay. And this is another place where you can kind of have fun and experiment. So what we're gonna do today is, we're gonna do three different ingredients that add up to a cup. So we're okay. gonna do a third of a cup of the dark chocolate, a third of a cup of coconut, and a third of a cup of chopped pecans. Okay. But you could do, I mean, white chocolate, you could do raisins are really, really mm -hmm. good, especially if you're using this as breakfast or as mm -hmm. a snack. Um, you could use any kind of nut, really, that you so want. So like anything Peanuts. you might find in a trail mix. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like making your own. These are, we're going to roll these into energy bites. So these okay. are chocolate peanut butter energy bites. But 
it's kind of a substitute for a store-bought granola bar. Mm -hmm. Again, where you're controlling the ingredients, there's mm -hmm. no added preservatives, um, and yeah. yeah, a great replacement for a store-bought version. So you say we get a, up to a cup of, of mix-ins. Of mix yes, exactly. So since we have three, we're doing a third of a, a third cup of each. A cup yeah. Each. Let me see if I'm just gonna put this like. There we go. There's our pecans awesome. and any kind of nut works here. This is our coconut. Coconut really actually adds like a lot. You just want to like grab it. Here, I'll pour. Okay. Perfect. Two person job. Yeah. Always nice to have extra hands in the kitchen. Okay. Coconut. And then our dark chocolate chips. You don't have to use dark chocolate, but so there is some antioxidants in um, in dark in cocoa. Mm -hmm. And so the dark chocolate tends to have more versus like your milk chocolate. Right. And so from from if you are trying to make this a little bit healthier, that's why we chose the dark. So we're just kind of stirring it up to incorporate it. And this of, is just one serving, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this should make, well, it depends on the size that you make your bites into. Mm -hmm. Typically, this will make maybe, you could make 18 really small ones, uh -huh. nine kind of bigger ones. And then what I would do is put it in the fridge, mm -hmm. allow it to kind of chill. chill, and the ingredients will stick together a little bit better that way. And then after a little bit, we'll roll it into bites. Okay, so we'll stick this in the refrigerator, yeah. let it chill. By then, we'll be ready to roll it out and probably sample our main dish. Yeah. It looks like it's almost ready. All right. We'll be right back. So we've had our dough, will we call it a dough? Sure. It's a dough. It's we a had dough. our dough sitting in the fridge for a little bit. It's yeah, a, a little minutes. bit chilled. Mm -hmm. Now we get to play with it. Yeah, we're gonna roll it into bites. You can also, like I said, spread this on a sheet pan, cut it into bars. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a messy process. So we're gonna get a, our hands a little bit wet. Okay. And then just grab some of the dough, like you said. And you could make these bigger, you could make these smaller. I kind of like to squeeze them together a little bit. Yeah. And then mm. sort of roll it together. Go. Awesome. One last bite. Yeah, and so these are great if you, you make a batch, keep them in a Tupperware in your fridge, mm -hmm. and then you could actually freeze them too. They'd last about a week in the fridge. Uh -huh. They may not last more than a They're day though. They're not gonna <laughs> last more than a day in my house. Yeah. Maybe about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are always a big hit. All right, and that's all you do. Cool, all right, so we'll check the uh, chicken and uh, get it plated up and we'll try it. And then we're gonna try these. They smell amazing. Peanut butter, chocolate, what's not to love? Mmm, award winning. Fresh out of the oven. Yes. That looks amazing. Our one pan chicken, sweet potato, and Brussels sprouts. It's one, ready to one go. One pan to clean after this entire meal. And that's part of the beauty of this. So we've got awesome. a nutritionally balanced meal. It's colorful and it's one pan. Yes. All right, so we, we gotta did it. try it. Okay, let's do it. I, I did make this a couple days ago, tasted it out. I hope it came out as good because it, <laughs> it tasted pretty good the other day. One of each. Awesome. Just to make sure we did okay. Perfect. I'll get this, I'll get this one over here. And actually, I mean, if you find that your vegetables are cooking faster than your chicken, mm -hmm. you can pull them out and, you know, set them aside, let the chicken cook to that 165 degrees. But we somehow timed ours and sliced ours to the right thinness, so. We did it. Perfect Success. timing. All right, here we go. All right. And look, it looks, it looks nice and moist. You don't want to overcook your chicken. Right. So we did keep an eye on it to make sure we didn't go too far past, but we definitely wanted to make sure it was cooked. You know, we could have cooked the Brussels sprouts a little bit longer, I think. That has a really good taste. Yeah, the chicken? And we only marinated, what, 10 minutes Yeah, maybe? not even a lot. So if you marinate it overnight, just imagine how flavorful mm. it would be. Yeah. That was really good. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to, I found that it's kind of hard to bake chicken Without drying it out. Right, and having to and remain tasting good. Yeah. Well, I think because we kind of crammed this pan in uh -huh. and the everything was kind of close together, there was a little steaming action going on too, mm -hmm. which I think could have contributed to why the chicken came out so moist, but also the marinade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you don't want to overcook baked chicken. What do you think? 
But Brussels could use a little extra. They could go a little bit yeah. longer, but they have a great taste. Okay, good. I think some of the balsamic marinade kind of seasoned them a little right. bit. Yeah. The potatoes came out perfect too. Look mm. at that. Mm. Oops. What do you think? I don't know. I think that's my favorite part. Yeah. Those sweet potatoes They're are good. really good. They're good. Mm -hmm. Oh, and good for you. Yes. Beta carotene. Good for your eyes. All right. I'm definitely finishing that in a few minutes. Well, you're going to have enough to feed your whole family. Yes, but we got to dip into this. Oh, yeah, dessert time. We yep. got to try the dessert. All right, tell me what you think. All right. You going to pop it in one bite? No, because I have to talk. Yeah. I would normally. Yeah. That's on the list. That's going on the list. I'm telling you, try this with your four-year-old. Mm -hmm. She'll love it. She'll make a huge mess. And have a blast. And you, you can tell her she can pick the toppings. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all fun with that. That is really good. I could definitely see taking that with me for a snack or yeah, in throw a couple meals. in a Ziploc. Absolutely. Yes. Keep them in that Tupperware in your fridge. It'll probably last up a, up a week or so. Mm -hmm. While I finish this, we talked about good measure meals. Yeah. We talked about um, how that all works with Open Hands mm -hmm. Atlanta, uh, but and we talked about how people can actually order, order online or over right? the phone yep the week so before are there other ways that they can help out people can support open hand yeah in a number of ways ordering good measure meals probably the most delicious way to do it um, but yeah we have volunteers coming in all the time helping to package meals and actually deliver drive meals to our open hand clients so we you can come out with your company you can come out with your family you can come out by yourself mm -hmm. but we love our volunteers and we actually couldn't do the work we do without them give us the uh, address again the the, the uh, website okay yeah so www.goodmeasuremeals.com um, you can see the different meal plans you can see the different menus you can actually order online mm -hmm. um, you can actually see some of the other things we offer too so our healthy catering line so if you have a corporate event that you want catered with some healthy food and also give back, giving back to a good cause mm -hmm. um, you can do our catering line with some really really delicious food on there all fresh um, mm -hmm. and really good for you um, you can see a little bit more about if you're interested in nutrition counseling. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend if you do want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, email me directly, nutrition okay. at goodmeasuremeals.com. Um, and then if you're interested in trying out a meal plan, you want to give yourself a break from cooking, and even though this is easy, right. it's even easier to order a Good Measure Meals plan. Yeah. Um, go online, and if you want to try us out, you can use the code TRY5 at checkout, okay. and that'll give you five days of three meals a day for the cost of four days of meals. Okay. So you're basically in a day free. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, so if you're interested in trying this, definitely put in the code, sign up, and get started on trying these amazing meals. If they're half as good as what we've cooked today, it's gonna be worth it. They're probably, I mean, I eat them all the time. We've got mm -hmm. professional chefs in there. Right. Um, so, yeah. I mean, we're pretty professional. It's, it's, we're, we're good, but yeah. I mean, I'm getting paid tens of dollars to do this. So that makes me professional, right? Absolutely. I think that's the definition. But yeah, good measure meal is a great way to eat healthy while supporting open hands, so supporting right. a good cause. Right. We like to say, eat well, stay healthy, do good. Okay, perfect. That's that's a good way to live right there. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for Thanks being for on the show today. Thanks for having me on. This was so much fun. I've enjoyed not having to cook this episode and just <laughs> enjoy the fruits of our labor. And if, again, if you want to get involved, go to the website, do something to help your community. And we'll see you next month on Serving's Kitchen with a Cause.